how to make a galaxy. Um, the, 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 the famous joke is uh, how to make a um, apple pie start with the universe. Um, so how to make a galaxy? The ingredients are dark matter and then stars and then gas, and the gas turns into stars and back. Um, but there is a there is another ingredient which is um, dust, and it's a bit of a misnomer. Uh, astronomers have been calling it dust since forever, but it's really closer to um, the, um, the the smog that's coming out of the back of a poorly tuned car. That's um, that's more like it. And so, if you think of um, um, the sun uh, sunsets, then you see lots of um, you see sunsets being red, especially if it's like a, a smoggy day or it's been like a, there's volcanic ash in the atmosphere. So this is the kind of stuff that we're talking about. And we noticed that a lot of disk galaxies from spiral galaxies gets reprocessed, gets uh, absorbed by this dust um, and gets re-emitted as this far infrared emission. And so the Herschel Space Telescope was launched by the European Space Agency specifically to look for uh, the dust in, in other galaxies. And it's been incredibly successful at that, but the thing that this group uh, that I'm a part of uh, has been working on is the fact that we don't quite understand how much of the dust, um, how much of the light from stars is being absorbed by dust and where exactly that happens. And so um, we have different measurements of how much uh, some millimeter light there is, uh, so far infrared light there is from the dust and how much light we think is missing and then how much light actually is missing and that's where the the problem like we were trying to tally up the uh, the light to make sure that we know how much uh, is missing and how much is being re-emitted as the far infrared and those two numbers don't seem to quite add up yet so that's it's a it's a budget sheet issue but it's a rather important one if you want to know how many stars there are in the typical galaxy or how many of them are being formed um where exactly they're being made, um, all these things. If you really want to understand a spiral galaxy, we need to know. Uh, we need to understand where the light is going missing. So the uh, the models have been getting better and better. Um, initially, we we kind of predicted hardly any dust there at all, um, and uh, it's it's. It's, de it's definitely, we're converging a little bit. Um, I did a lot of my thesis work on, on how much light is, is going missing uh, by using background uh, galaxies, for example, as, um, as the light source. And uh, the measurements we got from those still don't quite add up to um, what the models for these Herschel uh, edge-on galaxies tell us. Um, but it, that's probably due because there are some dark clouds, some very small dark clouds uh, spread through the disk that don't um, that are a lot denser than we think it is so um, the effect is called a Matryoshka effect uh, and so this is because uh, you're kind of looking through it's like looking through a bug screen um, and so everything still looks the same color there's no reddening going on but um, it is it is a little darker and so we think there's a bit of a bug screen effect in uh, in these galaxy disks. We don't quite know how good the stars in a galaxy are in producing either silicon or um, carbon, and especially uh, which process makes the dust to begin with. We can think of several ways to do it, um, but we're not sure which one of these um, processes is, is the dominant one. Um, so you can make dust in uh, the death of old stars where they, they shed their outer skin and um, in, the, um, in the skin that's being shed there is there's basically chemistry going on and, and these, these fine particles, these molecules and then fine particles kind of coalesce. You can have, have, have it happen in supernova and so we think supernova produce these things, uh, produce this stuff as well and it could just simply happen in you know, extremely slow chemistry in these clouds of interstellar uh, material. So some of these, um, so we don't quite know what is the most the dominant form, a formation process, how fast things see them going. And then, yeah, we don't quite know the ratio of chemistry. So we don't know if, if we're looking at mostly soot, so that would be carbon, or, um, yeah, really fine sand, that would be the silicon uh, version. 
Um, and they have slightly different optical properties. I mean, you can imagine uh, looking at uh, smoke that's kind of bluish and then looking at uh, very fine sand like dust, that powdery dust that's a little more yellow. So um, the reflection pro properties, their optical properties are very different. Um, this is something that is kind of, um, we've been looking at uh, in our own Milky Way, for example, or uh, the FAT project, the, um, the Andromeda project um, uh, with Hubble on uh, yeah, the, and our nearest galaxy, Andromeda. Uh, they have also been looking at the amount of um, extinction they're seeing towards their, the stars that they're studying. And there seems to be about a factor two off. And a factor two in astronomy is still something to worry about. We, we, we like to be exact, and um, especially these things tend to tend to add up over distance. So um, it, it's important to, to figure out which which one of these kinds of dust is dominant, which one of these two is the most prevalent kind of dust, I guess, in between the stars. So um, we, uh, we have to kind of, we can't go out there and get the dust, so we don't quite know what it's made of, but we have a decent idea um, from, uh, from spectroscopy in nearby stars, and there's been a couple of spacecraft that have actually caught a little bit of the dust as, a, as they fly through our solar system. So we have a little bit of an idea of what uh, kind of materials are floating out there, and um, so we make a model where we, where we populate a disk full of, um, uh, with, with different kinds of stars, and we say, okay, well, there's, here there's some stars being formed, here there's, um, these are older stars, and we populate it with clouds of different size and different densities of dust. And then we kind of trace the light as it goes out. So this is the hard part for a computer. You literally follow every ray of light through a galaxy as it's going through and it's hitting little bits of the interstellar material and it's either getting dimmed or it's getting absorbed or it's getting scattered and then you try to um, follow all this light through the through the disk and then see if your model lines up with what you see um, on the sky and so you can see two things you can see in the optical light that we've been looking at for since we've had telescopes and you see this dark band, edge on, you see this dark band, it's very typical of the Milky Way and other galaxies, so you see this dark band of stuff, and that's that's where the density of the dust is the highest, and so all the starlight, most of the starlight is being blocked. As you go to longer and longer wavelengths, so into the far, uh, near infrared, far infrared, and submillimeter, first you see the dark band disappear, because dust is not as good as absorbing light, red light versus blue light, so you see, start to see more and more of the stars. This is great. And then you keep going, and then at some point you don't see stars anymore, but you see the cooler things, so things that are um, uh, temperature, you know, body temperature, room temperature, and lower, cooler than that. And that's the dust, that's the dust itself. So suddenly that dark band starts to glow as um, in these far infrared and submillimeter. So, so millimeter means uh, just short of a millimeter in wavelength. And um, those things you can see either from the ground with the um, Atacama Large Millimeter Array, uh, so these big radio-like dishes, or with a satellite like uh, Herschel, and Herschel was specifically launched to go see these uh, wavelengths. And so you see the dust particles themselves glow, and so you can find where they are, but in order to match them, you have to see how many stars you had to heat them with to begin with, and then how hot they are in the uh, far infrared. And you try to align these, align these two observations, how much light is missing and how much uh, glow you see from the dust you see. And we haven't quite gotten there yet. The structure, especially in the interstellar matter, seems to be very self-similar. So if we uh, look at the largest scales, um, it looks it looks pretty smooth. But as soon as we look in any kind of detail, uh, it breaks up into filaments, and those filaments break into filaments, and those filaments break into filaments. Um, and so it seems to be um, it's it's kind of turtles all the way down. Um, and uh, these models, these radiative transfer models, they're at the at the limit of what we can do with computers right now just simply because there's so much light to to account for and so many uh different paths to to trace 
but as you get as you as you refine the resolution of the of the simulation because your computers keep getting better um, uh, you do notice that you have to take into account the smaller and smaller structure and, and as you go down and see that in our own Milky Way for the commercial you see these fine wispy filaments I mean, we, for the longest time, we thought of these things simply as spheres because, well, that was the easiest thing to, to think about, and the math was the smart ones, the uh, easiest to solve. But they're clearly uh, very wispy um, filamentary structures, so they, they um, um, we've been refining this as we go along. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think some of our uh, some of our new insights will come from the fact that we'll account for the, the very smallest structures, but. Um, uh, at the moment, this is as good as we can do, and um, it's actually pretty amazing how um, how well um, Alexander has done this. Um, because um, not only has he explained all all the images uh, together, he has kind of um, gotten it to a point where we where we we have a feeling where the the gaps in the uh, the model are as well. So it's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty amazing uh, result.